Good afternoon, everybody. My name is um, Michael. I'm an academic assistant here at Georgia Tech and uh, Summer Sessions Department. Um, thanks for joining us to talk about a bit about uh, the Ignite program. Um, I'm quickly going to go down my list of presenters and let everyone briefly introduce themselves, starting with probably my co-presenter, uh, Christina. Hey, everyone. My name is Christina. I'm the assistant director for Summer Session here at Georgia Tech, and I am coming to you from our Atlanta campus. Excited to see everyone. All right, uh, Lily. Hi, my name is Lily Arnold. I am currently a summer sessions intern. I am a second year LMP major, and I also did uh, Ignite my first summer here at Tech, which was 2019. Taylor? Uh, yeah. Hello, uh, my name is Taylor. Um, I am also a intern within the summer sessions office. Um, I'm a current third year student at Georgia Tech. My major is literature, media, and communication. Um, and I did Ignite in the summer of 2018. Uh, Allison? Hi, I'm Allison Tant. I'm a program and operations manager for academic engagement programs. In the, uh, the past two summers, I have been the track leader for the undergraduate research track. So I'll be talking a little bit about what that track entails. Um, Emma? Hey, y'all. My name is Emma Blanford. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm the director for the uh, Explore Living Learning community out of the College of Sciences, and I'm also the track leader for the pre-health track for Ignite. All right. Uh, Stacy. Hello, everyone. My name is Stacey Doremus. I am the Assistant Director for Leadership Education and Development, and my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am the track leader for leadership. Happy to be here. All right. Uh, DeMorris? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is DeMorris Walker. I'm the Director of Summer Sessions, and I'm sorry, I'm a, I might be a little sweaty. I was just outside doing some yard work. Um, but I'm happy to be here and looking forward to hearing from your questions. And finally, Michelle. Hi, I'm Michelle Reinhardt. I'm Associate Dean in the College of Design. And for the last three years, I have uh, been the track leader for the architecture and design track. So welcome, everybody. All righty. Um, and Christina, if you want to go to the next slide. Hit the next slide, Christina. So it's changing on my end and not changing on y'all. Let's see. Events has been taking a couple of extra seconds in recent oh. presentations to actually change on our end. Not sure if that's what's happening. It could be. Sorry, everyone, for the technical difficulties. Worst case, if you screen share your presentation without doing presentation mode, that will usually work. Ah, OK. I am using presentation mode. So I'm going to try that and see if that works. All right, that, that looks seems to be working. All right, so Perfect. just to start with a demo overview of what Ignite is to start your college career here at Georgia Tech in the summer instead of the fall. Um, during that summer, um, Ignite provides students with an academic and social transition to life here at Tech as well as um, college. Um, you'll take courses uh, that are generally uh, prerequisites or core requirements that all assist you towards your de degree completion. So you get the credits that count towards your degree. Um, as well as uh, you'll get the opportunity to participate in uh, lots of co-curricular events and activities. And some of the classes Ignite offers, as well as most of the uh, co-curricular events and activities are centered around a central theme that we'll refer to as a track. And we'll get more into all of this as we go through the presentation. Next slide. All right, so for Ignite 2021, we're not entirely sure where we'll be due to all this uncertainty around and surrounding the pandemic. We're aiming to be in person, so students living on campus, attending classes in person, 
um, and all our events being held in person around Atlanta on campus um, as we were in summer um, 2019. Um, there's a possibility that like last summer, we end up completely online um, where students are living at home, off campus, wherever that may be, um, and attending class completely online as well as attending all of our programming and activities online. Um, as well as there's also a possibility that we end up in a hybrid kind of model where perhaps students are able to live on campus, but you know some of the cla their classes might be online, some of our programming is online. So at the current state, we really don't know where we'll end up. We're hoping to be in person, um, but we'll kind of have to reevaluate that as we get closer to summer 2021. Um, so moving on now to our program options. So if we are able to have an in-person Ignite, you'll have two options while attending Ignite. Um, you can either choose to be in the living learning community or in the summer exploration community. If you're in the living learning community, you'll live on campus, um, on East Campus, uh, probably Glenner Towers. However, we have, haven't confirmed that yet. And it will be a traditional residence hall, um, with you know, two people to a room generally and a shared bathroom on each floor. If you're living on campus, we will require you to have a meal plan. And as well as you'll take six to seven credit hours, you'll be invited to all our co-curricular events and activities, um, as well as um, being, living in a residence hall, you'll have some option um, to um, take on some leadership opportunities in the residence hall. Um, you can also choose to be in a part of our summer exploration community. Um, during, as a part of this community, you'll live off campus um, and you'll have the choice of whether you want to have a meal plan or not. Um, and like the living and learning community, you'll take six to seven credit hours worth of coursework as well as participate in our co-curricular activities and events. If we're online, all, all Ignite students will live off campus, um, take six to seven credit hours worth of coursework, as well as participate in our you know, co-curricular activities and events. However, those would all be hosted online in something similar to this, probably. Next slide. Um, so to get into some of the academic courses that Ignite offers. Um, so most of your coursework will fall into that co co core requirement <clears throat> category um, or be a prereq to a you know, course you'll take later on, later on at Tech. We have, um, we do offer some major specific courses like uh, AE 1601, which is an introduction to aerospace engineering. We offered that last summer, um, but generally you'll be taking, you know, like English, uh, health, um, things like that, math. Um, our complete course offerings will be um, available in the spring, um, which we're working to finalize that up um, right now. Um, so you'll take three credits as a part of Ignite um, to get to six or seven credit hours. Um, two of those will be of, at, of your choice, and one of those will be GT1000. GT1000 is a required course for Ignite students. That's the theme to your track, which we'll get into tracks in just a second here. And uh, GT1000 General is a one credit hour course um, designed to help you transition to college life and life at Georgia Tech. So it goes through, through things like ac academic planning, um, career development, and so on. Next slide. Um, so what are the tracks? So as I've mentioned, the tracks theme, you know, that GT1000 class, as well as some of your co-curricular uh, events and activities. Um, and we'll have 80 tracks. Um, for Ignite 2021, they're listed here. Um, seven of those are tracks from um, Ignite 2020, and we have one new track this coming summer. That's the first year fall abroad at GTL. Um, the other tracks are Analyzing Atlanta, Architecture and Design, Innovation, Leadership, Pre-Health, Sustainable Communities, and Undergraduate Research. Um, so to give you an idea, idea on what the, these tracks um, entail, we're gonna turn it over to some of our track leaders who introduce themselves earlier and they'll talk about you know the events and activities they've hosted for their tracks as well as what that gt1000 um, aspect looks like and i guess start with allison if you're ready to go i am so thank you michael um so the undergraduate research track is a very exciting track for students um what we try to do is uh we incorporate of course undergraduate research sections of gt1000 those are normally taught by myself or and graduate students and doctoral students who are current researchers at Georgia Tech. So you're really getting to hear from actual researchers on campus. 
We also do a couple of co-curricular activities throughout uh, the five weeks, and those uh, are workshops or information sessions around how to get started in undergraduate research, what to expect when you're an undergraduate researcher. We've also had a workshop with graduate students and doctoral students talking about what undergraduate meant, research meant to them and how it led to where they're now out of tech. Um, we also ha have in the past had faculty as well as a uh, presence undergraduate research award recipients talk about what undergraduate research looks like and how that award has helped further their exploration of research. Um, we hope that if you join that you would be excited to join that track as well. If we are in person, ideally social distancing, we would like to give you lab tours, tours of different labs with faculty members, as well as hopefully the Invention Studio. Again, that is based upon whether or not we can do that social distancing wise. But if you are interested, well, we would highly recommend you sign up today. We do a lot of fun activities, and that is about all I have. Michael, I'll turn it over to somebody else. All right, uh, we'll go let Emma go next. Sure, so I'm the pre-health track leader. Um, and I'll start by saying that pre-health at Georgia Tech does not mean pre-med. We're very much a holistic approach to health, medicine, well-being. Um, we work very closely with our pre-health advising office and with our health initiatives office. We focus on all aspects of well-being and what a potential career in health could look like. So that could be everything from a physician or a surgeon to um, osteopathic medicine or a nurse practitioner. We bring in professionals from a variety of different fields so you get a good idea of what those fields actually look like um, rather than kind of playing off of Gray's Anatomy or, uh, or other maybe ideas of what we think the health field looks like. So you get a chance to talk about what are some of the expectations in the medical field. Um, what kind of lifestyle are you looking for? If you're the kind of person who really, really loves to be home, you know, with your potential future family at six o'clock, maybe an ER surgeon is not the career for you. So we really help you to sort of explore all of those different opportunities. We bring in uh, health initiatives to focus on your health and well-being so that if you can ground yourself um, in solid uh, well-being structures, foundations, um, everything from physical and mental health to uh, spiritual, professional, emotional well-being. Uh, those help to give you the foundations that you can then pass along to your patients. So we do, when we are in person, we do an exhibit um, or a tour of the bodies exhibit. Um, we've gone and attended uh, tours of labs. There's a variety of different labs from biology to chemistry, biomedical engineering who do work um, around the health field. So just because you're interested in health doesn't mean you have to necessarily be a practitioner. You could be a researcher in the field as well, um, you know, and being uh, creating medications or uh, medical devices and things along those lines. So the topic is is way broader, I think, than a lot of schools sort of focus on medical. Uh, so uh, we're excited to have you. And if you're interested, you can always reach out and learn more. All right, thanks, Emma. I'll turn it over to Stacy. Great, thank you. Um, again, my name is St um, Stacy Doremus, and um, our particular track um, really focuses on intentionally exploring and developing your leadership skills, trial and self-discovery. So we'll, you know, really explore um, different aspects um, of leadership, as well as critically reflect on feedback from peers, faculty, and staff. And so we know this is a really exciting time. Um, for all of you, it can be overwhelming, challenging, eventful, and more all at once. And so this is a time um, when you're at college to experiment and gain some really valuable insights about yourself and your leadership potential. So we'll um, help you develop um, and increase your self-awareness as well as um, your uh, collaboration skills. And so um, within this particular section, we really focus on your individual and um, team leadership development. So over the past um, summer, we've created um, a lot of different opportunities um, for our students um, in this um, environment. And so we did what we called Late Nights with Lead. And it was an opportunity for us to really connect with the students in our track as well as other tracks. And so some of the topics that we covered during the, those times was bridging the gap between high school and college. And so we know transitions can be particularly challenging. Um, sometimes 
you know, some are easier than others, um, but we know that there's some things that we may want to, you know, take with us um, from our high school experience. There may be things that we want to add, um, and then some things we might want to leave behind. And so we just, we kind of cover all of that um, and how we can be um, super successful in our new environment. Um, we also had some topics around working in virtual teams and what that looked like, um, developing intentional leadership pathways at Tech. We have how many resources that are available to our students. And so we really started to um, to really start to take a hard look at, you know, where where did you where do you want to go? How do you want to get involved um, in ways that you can continue to develop as you go through your career at Tech? Um, and then um, we did a session on success as an introverted leader. When we're in person, um, oftentimes we provide a lot of experiential opportunities for our students, um, such as going to the challenge course on campus. Um, visiting the Center for Civil and Human Rights, which is a phenomenal um, museum, um, offering reflection times after, you know, reflection and debriefing after that experience. And I'm a real firm believer in the integration of leadership in the arts. And so I think there's a lot that we can learn through the arts. Um, and so we um, have brought in improv, um, a local um, improv group into, um, into this experience where we can practice practice different um, leadership skills um, through the art of improv. And so that's a lot of fun. Um, we do a lot of different activities and we laugh a whole lot, um, but we're also very intentional about what we're learning in that process. And so if you're interested um, in developing your leadership skills, um, this is a phenomenal track um, to pursue as you're starting your, your career at Tech. All right, thanks, Stacy. And finally, we'll turn it over to Michelle. Great. Um, so as I mentioned before, I lead the architecture and design track. I've been doing that for the last three years. Um, and so some of you might think that the architecture and design track is really only um, intended for uh, students in the College of Design. And while we really encourage students in the College of Design to participate, we have a ton of students from a broad number of other majors um, who are really interested in, in the kind of the intersection of uh, the built environment um, and how it might uh, factor into their, their future studies. So uh, we have about a quarter of the incoming class from architecture takes the track. It's a great way to, to get to know your faculty really well. I coordinate the freshman studio, so uh, they get to know me early. Um, but we also have students from industrial design, building construction, music technology. Um, and then last year, for instance, we had students in aerospace, civil, mechanical engineering, biomedical, um, throughout all the majors in Ivan Allen, um, and then also in computer science. It's especially great for students who might be interested in um, looking at the at architecture or industrial design as a minor. Um, so one of the main areas of focus that we have within the, the track is how we um, experience and understand the world ar around us and the impact that design has on the, on, on the way we experience that world. Um, so in our GT1000, students are exploring uh, the topic of how we might use architecture and design as a way to address issues of sustainability. And when we talk about sustainability, we mean that very broadly. Um, so yes, it's about um, environmental sustainability, which is a, a, a core part of uh, the way we think about that. We might do on campus, we'll do tours of the Candida building, start to understand some of the, um, the sustainability initiatives here on campus. Um, we also look at um, economic sustainability and how the built environment can can help um, impoverished communities or, or or communities who are traditionally underserved by de by the design community. And then the third leg of the sustainability stool is um, social sustainability. Uh, so this past summer we actually uh, focused a lot on. Um, on social justice issues and, and the role that architecture and design can play in creating positive um, experiences, but also the ways that the unintended consequences of, of design and how we need to be more mindful of creating um, um, opportunities for everyone within, within our communities. 
Um, so we do look at that. When we are in person, we do a lot of tours. We went to Pond City Market to understand issues of gentrification and the Beltline and, and uh, what role as designers we play in that. Um, we always have faculty and practitioners um, and designers who are presenting their work and kind of talking about the impact uh, very broadly of their work. Um, and then we use the opportunity to in, uh, engage in a wide range, a, a wide, a wide array, excuse me, of activities uh, related to the built environment. Um, most of the students will also take the history of architecture course. Um, it's required for architecture majors, um, but it's also a humanities uh, course for students and other majors on campus. Um, so it's a great, a great opportunity to, to get to know some of your faculty. All of the tracks are, quite frankly, um, but then also um, a, a great way to, to get to know students who have common interests. Um, so we were completely online last year, and, and we did all of our courses synchronously, and it was a really great opportunity. We got to know them uh, by face. Um, I see them now in my class. And um, just past Friday, I met one of my Ignite students who's in mechanical engineering, and, and he was talking about how much he enjoyed um, doing Ignite as a transition uh, to joining life at Georgia Tech. All right, uh, thanks, Michelle. Um, and now I think I'll turn it over to Christina. To... All right. Well, I will um, I will give us a little bit of an overview of the, the tracks that we haven't mentioned thus far. Um, and then I'll turn it over to um, uh, my director, Dr. Walker, to um, give a little bit of um, overview of really Ignite and why a student would do Ignite. We have a little bit more presentation um, for you, and then we will turn it over to you all for questions. So um, as you are thinking of questions, please do be um, sharing those with us, and we will we will answer those um, either at the end or in the chat. So um, the ones we haven't mentioned thus far are innovation. Um, so innovation might be of interest to you if you're interested in both the maker side of innovation, so building things um, in, you know, our invention studio on campus, or um, the startup side of innovation. So that track, typically your G2-1000 is going to walk you through how to build prototypes, um, how to, um, you know, start a startup and what that has been like for Georgia Tech students and Georgia Tech alumni. Um, and you'll also get to talk to and potentially visit, if we're in person, um, some businesses and startups in the area to see what that um, what that is like, and, and a lot of GT alumni are in Atlanta, and we've been able to go um, in the last few summers to some really cool companies and places, so we really hope to be able to do that again. Uh, but that would be, if you're interested in either of those things, that, that would be a track that you might be interested in. Um, analyzing Atlanta is very um, focused on Atlanta as a city, um, so that GT1000 and the activities associated with that track, that one um, was brand new last summer. We're really excited to expand that and really keep offering that. Um, we had, for example, one of our professors here on campus talk to us about the history of Atlanta and the history of Georgia Tech um, and Georgia Tech's role in the city of Atlanta. Um, those GT1000s focused on, you know, what does, what is, what is being in a large city like Atlanta? What is the history, the culture, um, the, you know, really what is Atlanta famous for? The music, all of those things. Um, so we're we're looking forward to uh, being able to be in person, hopefully with that track and do some fun exploring around the city. Um, sustainable communities is um, it really does intersect with several of our other tracks, um, as you probably got from um, Dr. Reinhardt's conversation about architecture and design. Um, sustainable communities will focus on um, sustainability in the city of Atlanta, very local um, focus on those classes actually that is one track where we have both gt1000 and english 1101 and 1102 classes that are attached to it um, so you'll get a sustainability theme if you choose any or all of those last summer an example is that we did a virtual tour of the candida building here on campus which is um, our living building on campus it's really nifty um, and so we had a really cool tour from the director of that building um, he walked us through with his phone and showed us all of the, the fun features of the building. So we're really excited to um, continue that for that one um, has been um, in place for the past three summers as well as Sustainable Communities has. And then our newest um, track, First Year Fall Abroad at GT Lorraine, um, is an opportunity for students who might be interested in going abroad to our Metz campus in France um, in their first fall. 
So you'll start with Ignite here on the Atlanta campus, and then you will go to METS in the fall, um, and then you'll come back to Atlanta in the spring. Um, so that's going to be a smaller track. It's going to be for about 50 students. Um, you will be um, traveling in August, so you'll be um, heading to France, so you'll want to think about, um, and there are very particular classes um, that will be offered uh, in France, and so the program um, is, you know, it's going to have a very specific kind of curriculum. Um, and in the summer, you'll be taking classes that will help you get ready to go to France. So if you're interested in some adventure, we hope that you take us all with you and take lots of pictures. Um, we would we would very much like to go with you to METS, um, but we're really excited about that. And that has, um, we'll give you lots more information, but that has um, some costs associated with it as well for going abroad to METS in the fall. So um, you want to think about those things. All of those pieces are going to be available um, on our on our um, website. There, there's going to be a very specific kind of link to show you all of the pieces of that track. Um, so I will transition here um, to our activities. First, going to turn it over to our director, Dr. Walker, to talk a little bit about why a student might be interested in Ignite, in addition to these nifty activities that I will tell you about. Great. Okay, thank you, Christina. So, um, one, thank you all for uh, participating in this uh, information session. Um, as a, a couple of folks mentioned, Ignite uh, really has been around for about three years. Um, the summer for, uh, first year launch program started back in uh, 2006. And so this is, it was revamped in uh, 2018. And so um, we've been building, improving, and, and really making it a, a great opportunity for students to consider. So um, the ways that I think it, it's a benefit to students is that it counts as your first semester. You're taking actual courses, you're earning credit, and, and in some cases you're taking courses that will help you progress in your uh, major program or uh, satisfy a prerequisite or any other requirement um, that you need. In, in some cases, students who um, who bring in a number of credits, transferring as a dual enrollment students, it allows them to take uh, to keep moving forward in a different area, like in math or, or whatnot. So that, that's one thing. The other is that it's an opportunity to get to know the. If we're in person, um, you'll get to know the uh, Atlanta campus and the community, and and also meet a, a lot of wonderful uh, folks at Georgia Tech. Um, faculty, staff, and continuing students. And so building and learning about that community that exists at Tech. And it's really important for, uh, for many first-year students to feel comfortable, to feel confident and secure in, in, in the, their new environment. But if we're, we're online as, as we were this past summer, we were able to do a lot of different activities uh, virtually to try to create that sense of community and the opportunity for students to interact with one another and, and come together and also get to know each other as, as a cohort. Um, so we'll continue to do that. And that's really the way I, that I look at it, Ignite as one of its strengths is that it really is focused about ensuring students get to know one another, their peers, and, and, and build those relationships because that's their support network too when they begin school. Two other things that happens with Ignite. As I mentioned, it's their first, it counts as their first semester. So one of the outcomes for GT1000 is that all students will produce their first resume. And some students come in with experience having written a resume, some um, not so much experience, but it allows them to develop their first resume. But what's critical about that is that students are eligible to participate in the career fair uh, that we have often. And so in fall, um, the fall stu the students who start in the fall, they can't participate in the career fair after until they complete their fall semester. Ignite students can participate in the career fair. And this is a great opportunity for students who are interested in doing internships and they are just building a relationship with um, alumni and, and um, company reps so that at, when the time comes for them to uh, look to do an internship, they've already had the, op you know, made a few steps in, in, in developing those relationships. And then the final thing is similar to what the career fair is that students, there are some of our students who go through Ignite and we'll start an undergraduate research project in their, um, in their spring term. And so because they've had that time, their first semester, um, they're, they're able to set roots in the campus and really take advantage of all the different types of opportunity for academic engagement uh, that will enhance their experience at Georgia Tech. So I think it's a great, it, it may not be for everybody, but I think it's a great opportunity for a lot of folks who 
who want to um, get a head start, build relationships, get to know the campus, get to know faculty, staff, and, and get to know their peers. So I hope that you really consider Ignite and feel free to shoot us questions. Um, as Christina mentioned, please post your questions uh, in this box and we'll try to answer as many as we can. Thanks again. All right, thanks so much. Well, I'm gonna um, close us out with the PowerPoint portion and then we'll get to questions, any that haven't been answered here in a, just a few minutes. Um, so our, our activities, the fun part, uh, besides class, class is also fun, um, and you should definitely go to class because class is also fun. Um, the, the things that we have done both in our virtual summer last summer um, and our in-person summers, the two summers before that, um, are, you know, really around getting folks to build some community here on campus. So it's a smaller group, typically. Um, in 2018, we had 385 students. Um, in Ignite. In 2019, we had 500 students in Ignite. Um, last summer, we were a record-breaking 739 students, so it's a little bit smaller than um, a typical incoming first-year class at Georgia Tech. It's a, it's a piece of the incoming first-year class, so you really get to know folks. Um, it feels a little bit more like a, a small college experience because you really um, are all living together, too. So it's very fun. Um, things that we have done in the past in person summers that are that that are really exciting for folks and that folks really enjoy are things like Atlanta United game. We have gone um, and we had actually bought tickets already to this um, this summer's Atlanta United game, um, two games. And so we have um, tickets left over for the 2021 season. They they um, they will be ready for folks to be in person if we're able to do that in 2021. Um, Atlanta United is our local uh, MLS soccer team. Um, we have done some meetings with alumni career-wise, so GE Aviation, for example, they have some alumni that work there and came to um, talk to us about what their work life has been like at GE Aviation um, and, you know, figure out what folks might experience if they were to do an internship or a co-op there. Um, we've also interacted um, this past summer when we were virtual, we tried something um, new uh, that was really a hit. It was our Ignite at Night um, events, and we did several of these, and they were midnight virtual events. Um, so midnight sounds um, like an exciting time for us here in the Eastern time zone, um, but it was, it was also um, a time that we were able to meet some folks that were in very different time zones um, and maybe would not have otherwise participated in our events because we were in the Eastern time zone, and um, other folks were all the way in their in their home countries completing Ignite as well. So um, we had a lot of fun with that, and it was really popular. Um, we always have speakers, so we'll bring in speakers um, on lots of different topics, the history of Atlanta, um, startup innovation, um, success at Georgia Tech, so alumni, things like that. So, And we usually do um, some, some really hands-on pieces, like both Allison um, and Emma have described lab tours, um, you'll do that in class or with us, um, those types of things. We've also watched 4th of July fireworks in the Bobby Dodd Stadium. That was also really popular, um, and we hope to be back doing that next summer. So I'm going to turn it over for just a couple of minutes to um, Taylor and Lily. They are both um, Ignite students that have completed Ignite, um, in, and they can talk a little bit about – they worked with us last summer when we were virtual, so they can talk a little bit about both experiences and any, any wisdom they want to, to share with you all. I'll start with Taylor. Cool, awesome. Um, so like I said, I attended Ignite during the summer of 2018, which Demoris just said uh, was the year they revamped it. So it was kind of like, ooh, fun, like first Ignite. Um, and yeah, um, I was um, accepted for the summer term. Um, and I know that we were talking about that in some of the question and answers. Um, and so just like clarify what that means. So from tech, um, you can get a fall acceptance or summer acceptance. And I feel like there's other acceptances you can get, but I'm just going to talk about those two. Um, so summer acceptance means that like you're going to come through the Ignite program um, and you usually cannot like go forward. So you can't like go and start in the fall like you have to start in the summer. Um, but if you get a fall acceptance and you want to do Ignite, you can like still totally do Ignite um, and kind of switch your acceptance to summer. Um, so hopefully that wasn't confusing, but I saw that we were talking about it. Um, so yeah, um, I was accepted for the summer, so I did Ignite um, and it was super duper fun. Um, we had a question about like the benefits 
of enrolling at Ignite. Um, and I think some of the greatest benefits that I um, got to indulge in um, was the like lighter class load. Um, I went to like a kind of rural high school and I didn't have like very, I didn't like take a lot of AP classes and like dual enrollment wasn't really a thing. Um, so I had no idea what a college classroom was gonna look like. Um, and be being able to like come into Ignite and take, you know, like I, for example, I took English 1102 and health um, along my GT 1000. And that was like the perfect like intro to like how hard uh, college can be sometimes. And like being able to learn those time management skills before the fall semester when you're having, you know, a load of like four or five classes um, was a very invaluable experience to me or very valuable experience to me. Um, because it prepared me. Um, and I also got a 4.0 that semester, which really helped in the fall semester when I did not get a 4.0 and there was some padding. Um, so that was awesome. Um, I also, this is like a very like general benefit, uh, but you get to learn campus um, and the area while people like, there's not a lot of people on campus. Um, so you get to explore a little bit more. Um, you do have free time during Ignite. So don't think that you're just gonna be taking classes 24 seven. Um, definitely take advantage of the programming um, that we put on. Uh, the interns work very hard uh, to make fun things happen. Um, so definitely like go out and explore Atlanta. Um, that was something that I really enjoyed. Um, not only the year that I did Ignite, but the year that I was an intern as well. Um, just getting to see things in Atlanta that I never, you know, probably would have gone to by myself, like the bodies exhibit in Atlantic Station. Um, or an Atlanta United game. I went to my first Atlanta United game with Ignite. Um, and it really just kind of like puts you into not only like the Georgia Tech culture um, and lets you get used to that, but it also kind of throws you into the Atlanta culture that surrounds it, um, that I think really makes Georgia Tech a special place. Um, especially, you know, like it's located in Midtown Atlanta. Like there's no better location for a college in my opinion. Um, and yeah, I feel like that's, oh, um, I also got involved with a bunch of student organizations um, my first semester. So getting involved in student organizations can be pretty intimidating in the fall because um, there's a billion other first years that are trying to get involved, right? Um, but in the summer, uh, <laughs> like it was very chill um, and I was able to kind of like plug into um, and try a lot of organizations before the fall happened. So I kind of like already had a niche going on um, which I think really helped set me up for success um, throughout my career at Tech. So yeah, Lily, do you have anything? I talked a lot, so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I will talk about dual enrollment actually because I did dual enrollment. And I saw that question too. Um, I did not have any troubles finding classes that I hadn't taken, and I don't think you you guys would either. Um, I also took English 2 Health and G2 1000 like Taylor, actually, um, in my year, which was 2019. So it was like the second year. And um, yeah, like Taylor said, um, you get to explore campus pretty well because there's like no one else on campus. Like, sure, there's, you know, other students, but we were, it was, you usually just saw like uh, people like from your hall or like somewhere in your dorm. Um, we did a lot of activities. I went to the Atlanta United game. I there was also a ropes course that I could do as part of my track. My track was actually leadership, and um, yeah, uh, Ignite just allows you to kind of like figure out tech. That's what I kind of saw it as. Like, um, it allowed me to figure out campus. It allowed me kind of figure out how like classes went. How you know. How different things are here compared to like my dual enrollment college or like high school. Um, I also uh, got to just meet new people, which is also really nice before going into like the nerve wracking, you know, fall where everybody's just arrived. Whereas with Ignite, it's just a little, little piece of the freshman first year class and you get to meet the small piece before you meet a lot of, a lot more. And it's kind of nice. Not as nerve wracking. Like going into like one of my classes, I already knew several people in my classes because over the summer we all were registering together for our fall classes. Um, Ignite just allows you to find a community, and I that's what I absolutely love about it. 
Um, and I really do think Kayla hit a lot of the points. Uh, yeah, I'm going to turn it back over. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We also forgot to talk about online. Um, I don't know if you want to mention um, some small things. Um, I know, obviously, like the concept of doing college online, a little terrifying. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, me and Lily are living it right now. We've been living it since March. I also think that I think that the programming um, was super duper awesome this summer, even though it was virtual. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, I mean, I assume some of y'all are probably doing online classes for your senior year of high school, maybe. I don't know. You may be in person. Um, but yeah, don't stress out about it too much. Um, I know it's a very daunting thing to think about, but there are a lot of resources, um, virtual and in person, um, that are here to help you succeed at tech. Um, so do not stress out about that. I don't know if Lily has anything else to say, but I forgot we were supposed to talk about that. Um. I guess I could just real quick say we really had a lot of the same events that we would do in person. Uh, we'd have them just streaming online. And um, it actually kind of, in my head, I feel like I definitely would have like come to more events if it was virtual. And I say that because I literally could have just like logged on from my room. Like there's something about virtual, you kind of get to go to more stuff because you don't have to, you know, cross campus, you know, to go one, one event to the other, you just log on. And you're there. That's my little thing. All right. Well, thank you, Taylor and Louie. And they did hit on a really important point. You know, while we don't know what format we'll be in, um, we have, you know, we've committed, we're going to make the best of it. So this summer we were really, um, we were, we were surprised by virtual, um, but we made the best of it and we will make the best of whatever kind of um, format we're in or whatever combination of formats we're in. So we're, we're, we're doing pretty well on campus now. And we, we feel like we did, we did well this summer when we, um, went virtual. And so we're, we're learning as we go. Um, I get to tell you, close out and tell you all about the, the fun part that everybody does really need to know. Um, how much does it cost? So, um, tuition and, um, fees. This, this shows your summer 2020 rates. It will give you an idea of what summer 2021 would be like. Um, we don't know the exact amounts, um, but these are, this will give you a good ballpark. Um, some things don't change. For example, our Ignite program fee does not change. That's always going to be $200. Um, but the um, exact rates of fees um, can sometimes vary like dining and housing. Um, however, uh, if you are um, in state and you're, you're going to be using Hope and Zell Miller, those do apply. Um, if you're out of state and using financial aid of any kind um, or in state and using financial aid of any kind, um, the important part is to remember to fill out the prior year um, financial aid application. I'll explain that in just a second. Um, and there's a, a very clear information document on financial aid's website that will walk everybody through that as well. Um, we're very used to that. and We're very used to helping folks out, figuring figuring out the paperwork piece of doing Ignite. Um, but in general, you'll want to count on if you're living on campus, Michael mentioned this, housing and dining. Um, if you're living off campus and commuting from home, um, then you would uh, not need to consider housing and dining. If you're living off campus and want to live on your own too, you wouldn't have to do that. Um, so. Um, so these are the big numbers, the ones to think about if you're off campus um, for any reason. Um, and then here's the, the last piece of big information I have for you is financial aid. So summer counts in the prior academic year. Um, so that means summer counts in this year. So each year when students complete Ignite, they have to go to the prior year um, and complete that financial aid application. So the FAFSA um, or the uh, GSF app, if you are um, using Hope and Zell Miller, for example. Um, financial aid is really familiar with that. They will start sending you emails if they notice that you're an Ignite student and you haven't completed those. Um, and we are very active in figuring out who needs to still complete paperwork. Um, we were doing personal emails last summer um, and personal outreach to students who, to make sure that everybody got this taken care of because you don't want to miss out on the paperwork um, for these pieces. But yes, Hope and Zell Miller do apply. You can use Pell as well. Um, you can also use, of course, other forms of federal financial aid um, as well. So it is a regular semester in that sense. Um, all right, we are we are closing out the PowerPoint and we're going to get to some questions. 
Um, this is our, our information is really easy to find. We are summer.gotech.edu and we're summer at gotech.edu. And so we are, we are pretty easy to find in Google and on the website. Um, and then I will, now I can see our team, um, and we will get to any questions you might have. So Taylor, Lily, Michael, are the questions I have not gotten to or things we should talk about? All right, so I see a few here. It looks like we may have answered just about all the questions here. Um, if you have any last minute um, questions, let me know. Um, the, the information for Ignite, so application or how do you say you want to join Ignite, essentially, um, that will happen after admission. So once you receive an admission decision from Georgia Tech, uh, which for some students will be as early as December, depending on when you applied, um, you are able to, as soon as you receive that admission decision and you have um, decided that you want to come to Georgia Tech or and we've we've given you an offer of admission, then you can apply to Ignite. Um, and so it will be in your admission portal. Um, I see your question here. Um, if you plan to, that's a good question about housing. If you plan to room with someone, do they also have to attend Ignite? So if you plan to room with someone in the summer, then they would also attend Ignite. But if you mean having a fall roommate, um, that's completely okay. You can have a different summer roommate than a fall roommate. Um, that's that's possible. Um, but fall, you can you can separate those out and live with someone in fall and summer. Um, if you're living on campus for Ignite, will we have the same? Ah, that's a good question. That's a big one. Everyone um, is is really interested in that question. Um, so the answer is. Likely not um, because of just the way priority works for housing, but it is possible. Um, quite a few students uh, end up staying in the same hall, maybe not necessarily the same room at all. Housing is um, in typical years, um, I, you know, each year is, is, is different and um, next year will probably be, you know, there will probably be pieces we hadn't ever thought of before, but um, Picking a fall room depends on your priority when you applied for housing. Also depends on whether you're going to be in a living learning community in the fall or not. So if you're going to um, be in Ignite in summer and be in Grand Challenges in the fall, for example, um, you would have to typically move residence halls. We expect um, this coming summer that we would be on East Campus. We don't know that for sure yet. Um, they're still deciding assignments for the summer, but we would expect um, that students were it's going to it's going to be a place that can hold our size um, because we're a pretty big group in the summer so they're working on figuring all of that out and working on the social distancing pieces of that as well so all right if there are no other questions um, folks that are joining us here is there anything else you want to share or that I've missed um, yeah this is Demaris I, I see a post of a question about um, if someone had not selected the uh, checkbox of for early that they're in right, during the early application um are they still allowed to change or join and the answer is yes um the checkbox really just indicates your interest um but all students will be invited to all admitted students will be invited to opt in or participate in ignite um, all summer admits their option is to attend only ignite All right, so it looks like we have some new questions. Um, perfect timing. We will get to those um, right here before we close out. Um, can we have um, pets? So, yep, Emma has got it right. So housing has, um, you know, the same rules for um, pets as in fall and summer. Um, students with accommodations, though, for animals um, in the residence halls need to go through our um, dean of students office and they'll they'll work with students that um, have those specific accommodations for um for animals in the halls but otherwise the rules are the same in throughout the year um, is there another application for ignite after ad you're admitted to georgia tech um, i.e essays there aren't any more essays um, if you don't like essays um, good news there aren't any more essays for us um, what there is there is though is an application that's pretty short it just asks you to pick your top 
um, choices of track. The reason we do that is just in case we do not have space. So some of our tracks fill up pretty quickly, um, and some of our tracks are very limited by um, numbers. So for example, um, our architecture and design track, we really want to make sure we get all of our architecture um, students and College of Design students that want to be in there in there, and so we don't always have space for everybody. Um, but um, you know, we try to accommodate as many as we can. Our innovation track, for example, and our undergraduate research tracks, um, those often fill up very quickly. So sometimes we may not have space for folks. Um, so that's why we ask you to pick your top couple of ones. Um, and then we ask you, we put um, a few details about Ignite, like the date of move in, all of that good stuff. And then we make sure that everybody understands that um, on the application. But no, no more essays. Um, and then I see. Emma answered our hands-on experience, definitely. Um, we've talked about um, if we're able to do it safely this coming summer, we definitely, in a normal sort of typical summer, um, pre-2020, um, we would have been in labs, we would have been in maker spaces, we would have you know, been doing lots of hands-on activities both in your classes and outside of your classes. So, all right, well, we will close it out. If um, there are no more questions, I don't see any um, other brand new ones. We really appreciate everybody uh, being here tonight. If there are new questions that you think of after this um, webinar, feel free to email us. We're at summer at godtech.edu. We're pretty easy to find and we try to get our emails really, really quickly. Um, and so we are also um, available um, by uh, social media, as Taylor has reminded everybody. So we are we are pretty proud of our fun social media presence. So we're at GT Summer Session on Instagram and Twitter. So you're also welcome to to send us direct messages there, um, and we will, we're will we happy to answer um, questions. We will see you summer 2021. Oh, we're very excited. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Bye. Well, bye-bye.